Today on Larry King Now, three-time NBA champ Rick Fox. What do you think your best basketball skill was? Uh, selflessness uh, and a willingness to turn myself over to the team concept, but defense. In the last minute, you wanted to take the best player? Yeah, oh, I wanted him for 48 minutes. Can racism exist in a black-oriented league? Oh, can it, it exist? It exists. What's it like to play in a seven-game series? The only only solitude you have is when you hit the floor. In the 48 you know, hours in between games is a nightmare. Plus, Kobe is very bright. Do you think at the end of a career he might go to another team with a shot to win one more like the Knicks? I don't think, I wouldn't put it past him going in search of another one or two championships. And I believe personally that's going to get done in New York. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Joining us, actor, producer, retired NBA star Rick Fox. Rick is a three-time NBA champion with the Los Angeles Lakers, took home titles in 2000, 2001, and 2002. He's also acted in television shows like Oz and films like Holes. His most recent project, the film Off Season, The Lex Morrison Story, is available for rent online and at Vimeo.com. We'll talk about that and lots of other things. Let's get right to things. Current. Yeah. Is going to have a good final here, Spurs Heat? I think so. A rematch is always always exciting. I, I worked the finals last year, and I all, all the way up until the point that Ray Allen hit that shot, I, I was ready to go down and watch the Spurs celebrate, a, a, I think, a dynasty uh, completed with Tim Duncan and Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili. I'd gone from complete hatred of them in, in competing against them to admiration and was actually rooting for them in that series, if I admitted it. Uh, and didn't now, Alan, didn't Allen travel? Uh, <laughs> he got it off. You know, in the NBA, if, if traveling wasn't a what is traveling? If, what is it? Yeah, if it wasn't forgiven so often, I guess you could say he might have. There's something about the two finals that are incredible, probably because they're indoor arenas: a Stanley Cup and NBA. The crowds are fully. It's there's pressure every second. What's it like to play? in a seven-game series? Well, I can think of two, two seven-game series in particular. One against the Portland Trail Blazers in our first run in 2000 to a championship. We were down by 15 points at home. I dug ourselves out of that hole to go on to the NBA Finals, win our first championship. That was, I didn't sleep that night. Uh, I had a, a baby a few weeks earlier, and it was my, my, my first daughter. And, but, yeah, the match of the two, the exhilaration, the anxiety, the stress, uh, I think I lost maybe like 10 pounds in a week just uh, from, from that stress. Uh, and then the other one was the Sacramento Kings series, uh, yeah. Western Conference series, that one, one for the ages. Uh, and the same, same thing, you know, you, you, you're living, the only, only solitude you have is when you hit the floor. Uh, the hours between, the 48 you know, hours in between games is a nightmare. Because you just you can't. And in comparison about. to hockey, playing every other night, the yep. Kings series with the yeah. Hawks, that was unbelievable. I just got into it actually. Yeah, uh, once you get into it, you can't turn it I, off. I, Phil Jackson turned me on to it. We spent the last few weeks, uh, you know, discussing his new journey in New York uh, with the Knicks, and uh, we watched it. We watched the hockey game, and you know, I'm born in Canada, so you would think I would have some hockey background, but I didn't really. I never really got into it. Do you like the Heat? Can they do it again? I respect the Heat. I don't think they're the same team, and no team is from year to year. But uh, I, I like I like that LeBron James has risen to a level where where he understands how to will his teams to victory. I just think there's something about the Spurs team, their depth, uh, the 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 return. I wouldn't say revenge, but the opportunity, a second chance to redeem themselves. Do they that. need a healthy Parker though? They do. They do need a healthy Parker, or they need at least, like he gave them the other night, 19 solid minutes, even if it's not Tony Parker-like minutes uh, that we've grown accustomed to seeing. They still need him out there. They can't, I don't think they can win without him. It's hard to compare errors, this error to that error. Is yeah. LeBron the best ever? If we track it, uh, we align his career so far up with the other greats of the game up until this point, I would say yes. 
Uh, I think there's still some longevity that has to uh, show up uh, for him to take that that mantle and be the king of not just in, in nickname, but the king of, of all time, his greatest player. Uh, he's, he's definitely tracking that way for sure. How would you defend him? I, I got a chance to actually. Didn't wasn't I don't know how successful I, I was at it if I recall, but uh, he he. How would I defend him? Oh man, I, I'd try to match my my willingness to be physical with him, but that doesn't seem to interfere <laughs> with him at this stage in his game. When he was younger, it did. Uh, he doesn't mind being touched and bumped and 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 have shots. Uh, I guess I'd, I'd try to deny him the ball, but I mean who's Who's been successful at that? He's gonna he'll go get it off the re, off the boards and take it the full length of the court himself. In this overall picture of greatness, where do you put Kobe? You know, I'm biased. You know, I have three rings uh, due to Kobe's greatness and Shaquille's greatness and uh, what we did together. But I, I had him. I really had him on track until his injury, surpassing whether he'd admit it or not, chasing Kareem's record. I think he has, you know, five championships. I still saw one more somewhere in there. I thought the Lakers would find a way to, you know, reload quickly, which they've historically done. And if he ended up with six rings uh, and done all the things individually he, he was on track to do and played 20 years, the longevity and the consistency of, of play, I didn't, I didn't see that matched by anyone other than Kareem. Uh, so, and to do it as a, as a two guard, you know, was yeah. was even more impressive to me, not being a big man. So where he's at now, unfortunately, is, is the injury has slid him and slotted him probably in the top ten. Uh, you know, he... Kobe is very bright. Oh, yeah, he's sharp. Oh, very yeah, I don't sharp. think a lot of people know that. Do you think at the end of a career he might go to another team with a shot to win one more? I would not, I would not say, I would not put it past him. Like the Knicks. Like the Knicks. I, uh... We know a lot of the same people there. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I think with Phil in New York right now, and I think uh, finishing his career in the next two, three years here in L.A., if there's not a real opportunity for him to, to win a championship here, the thought of him leaving may shock Laker fans. I don't think, I wouldn't put it past him going in search of another one or two championships. And I believe, personally, that's going to get done in New York. Uh, I you really, do. I really do, yeah, and I, and I don't. I just believe in Phil. I've been around him, and I know that Kobe's had his greatest success uh, with Phil in a leadership capacity. So, the reuniting of the two, I don't think, is unrealistic thought. We're talking to Rick Fox. We'll talk about his various projects. He's a hell of an actor. And when we come back, Rick sounds off on trending topics from the NBA and beyond. Stay with us. In a little while, we'll talk about the Lex Morrison story, that recent, that Rick's newest project, staying with the NBA. What about Phil Jackson? I've, I've, I've known him for some time, I mean, not intimately. What, what is so special about him? Ah, oh boy. Um, well, A, he's, uh, he's connected spiritually to, to I think, uh, something greater than the game. He's been on that journey for years for himself. So I think he has a, a, a balance there in his life uh, that's a foundation that I, I think a lot of us are still searching for. Maybe I know myself, I'm still searching for. I had a journey with, you know, with him as a player that set me closer to an understanding of what worked for me. Uh, so I think there's a, there's a silence there for him uh, that, that makes it easy for him to connect to collective group consciousness and, and then steer it steer it in a, in a way that leads, in the case of NBA players, group of men that make millions of dollars. Is have, he hard to play for? Uh, no, not for me. Um, I, I had a willingness to turn myself over to whatever direction he, he steered the ship. I, I've just been that type of person in my own life when it comes to, to you know, feeling fortunate enough to be on the right team, and I just so go with it. So you can be directed well. I can be directed well. What's so special about the triangle? Uh, equal opportunity, it, uh, there's a flow to it, there's a dance to it that incorporates everyone. Unlike some of the, some of the teams I watch now uh, in the game, they just, a lot of still individual attack, which I don't think is the optimal approach to 
winning basketball games, but the, the triangle just creates a tempo and a rhythm, creates unity, creates the opportunity where all parties are field involved, and therefore you're, you, you're not easily predicted. How do you assess the whole Clipper story? Uh, well, you know, a lot to, it was a lot to digest in the midst of the playoffs. Uh, I didn't know Donald Sterling personally, although I know a lot of his personal health issues uh, have come into play. Uh, I, I don't judge people. I just, Feeling I refuse. sorry for him? I, I, I don't feel, I feel sorry for the situation. I feel I'm really disappointed that, that all involved uh, have had to experience such such a, a, a untasteful. Can racism exist in a black-oriented league? I mean, it could. oh, can it? It exists. It exists. Did you see it when you played? Uh, I, I think if the street flows in all directions, uh, I don't think. Uh, but that I think is our current state. Uh, we we strive to improve uh, daily. I think as a society, but we regress some days. Some days we move forward. I don't, I don't, I'm not delusional enough to think that it, it's not still in society. But it has to be buried So You couldn't be a racist coach in the NBA. You could. You, how? Uh, how would you communicate with, how, uh, I think those are the guys sometimes that, that do, do, don't succeed. It's not that they don't succeed because they're racist, but I think uh, you have to care about your players. And if you have, if you have at your core uh, sound belief of dislike for an ethnicity or an individual because of their background, that's going to be a disconnect. Uh, you won't win. You won't win. And so, therefore, you have those, you have those moments in, in, I think, professional sports in general, not just the NBA. Uh, it lives there. It just lives there. We recently did a hell of a panel show on the NFL's new ruling on, on the N-word. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? you think it can work? I hope it works. I hope it works. Uh, um, can it work? Will it work? I think uh, communication is, is nonverbal. Uh, a huge chunk of it is nonverbal. I think uh, if you, if your belief of, of of someone is to that level, you don't even have to say the word. It's going to reach. It's going to read. Uh, but that's a good start. I like that. Gaze in sports. Mm -hmm. We have now in the NFL or in the NBA. Yeah. Think that's coming, and do you think it'll be accepted? I think it's been here. The acceptance of it. It will will grow with time. Uh, Jared, Jared, Jason Collins, and um, I think Michael Sam. Sam. Michael Sam recently in football, brave men for stepping out and, and uh, being a voice and standing for their own first standing for themselves, and uh, being role models for other uh, gay men and women who who are in the workplace that want to be expressed. So uh, the acceptance now uh, and the growth comes from their their teammates and the rest of the league. You say it's always been here. Did you know gay players? I didn't know gay players. I just know as I've as I've evolved in as an actor and being around being around Hollywood and working with gay men and women, the understanding of of just the community itself uh, gave me insight into uh, how difficult it's been for gay and uh, men and women to live and how covered they've lived uh, for so many years. Uh, and so it just I just I just look at it and I think yeah, it has been has to have been gay men and women that just haven't felt safe enough to express themselves. When they more come open, do you think it's going to be accepted readily in NBA locker rooms? I think you have to demand it. I think you have to just demand equality in general. You have to be a great player? No, I'm college. No, 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 I don't think you have to be a great player. Uh, the separation of, of your skill uh, at, at your job versus, you know, your personal life, those, it's hard for those not to cross. It's hard for me to be a teammate and not interact with a fellow teammate and not know something personally about, about them. I just think that um, that the, the message probably reach, reaches the masses uh, greater if it is a, like if Martina Navratilova had come out when she was in the midst of her playing yeah. days. You know, it takes a great player, I think, to, to galvanize the masses. After the break, we'll hear about Rick's newest film, Off Season, the Lex Morrison story. Don't click away. Our guest is Rick Fox. His newest project is Off Season, the Lex Morrison story, available for rent online at Vimeo.com. Is, is that the only place it's going to be available? For now. 
Is there such a person as Lex Morrison, or is this a fictional story? He, he is a fictional, it's a fictional story, but he's made up of about eight different characters throughout my career. Oh, really? Guys I, I played with, and uh, actually, you know, an alter ego. Uh, I was a pretty, pretty uh, well, well based. Uh, it's you? <laughs> no, it's, it's me if I, without the reins, without the training wheels on, if right. I right, had let, let myself go. Let's see a clip from Lex Morrison's story, Off Season. Watch. Your contract expires this summer. Do you really think the team will exercise its option for another three years? Okay, that's enough. No more questions, you guys. Now, you've missed almost 30 games this season due to injuries. Your point production is down. Well, what do you expect? I'm surrounded by rookies on and off the court. What about your off the court antics? Don't you feel they distract the team? Lex, don't answer no, that. What I do off the court is my business. Do you really think at your age you can continue? My age? To my age? Who the hell is this? Talk about my age. Did you want me to retire? Huh? Y'all want me to retire? Fine, I retire! What took you to acting? Uh, I You're a natural, good looking, tall LA. I mean, yeah, no. The, uh, I got into it, uh, I went to school for radio, television, and motion pictures, so I always had a desire to be in the field of, of entertainment, but it took, uh, it took the movie Eddie uh, with Whoopi Goldberg in an off season, a lockout season at that. That was a Celtic story, right? Yeah, uh, no, it was a Knicks. Knicks it was a Knicks, right? yeah, the Celtic, uh, uh, the Knicks, uh, it was a Knicks story. I played a Knicks player, and I spent two months with Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg, Richard Jenkins. Dennis Farina, the late Dennis Farina. Great guy. Uh, great cast. Other actors like Mark Jackson, uh, actors, other players like Mark Jackson, John Sally, who's acted, uh, the late Malik Seeley, who passed away, and Dwayne Shinsis, who passed away. We all spent two months down to shooting this movie, and I got to talk to crew and directors uh, and, and actors, and really those three people, uh, Whoopi, Richard Jenkins, and Dennis Farina, were the three I spoke to the most. And, I fell in love with it, and I knew that. What did you like about it? Group dynamic, storytelling, and uh, uh, playing a role. Same things I get from being a part of great basketball teams, uh, but also just the self-discovery, the journey of, of bringing parts of myself to characters. I got to learn more about myself. I got to get outside of myself uh, and be a little more extroverted instead of introverted. Is Lex a, com a comedy? Yeah. Lex, Con, Lex Morrison, the off-season story is a comedy. Our character is, uh, think of uh, the most dis dysfunctional guy, uh, but the best player in the league. Oh, he is the best Yeah, player. he's the best player in the league, but he's never won. Uh, he's as dysfunctional as it gets once the season is over. So keeping him under wraps between you know, June, well, he doesn't make it to June because he doesn't win championships, from April to when he has to get back to training camp is... It's like wrangling a while. A, a lot while of basketball more. scenes. Uh, very few. Uh, most it's of it the is off set. Season. Most of it is in the off season. But they got to get him into shape. And when I say they, the PR director and the trainer are assigned to him, and they come and live at his house. It's the Lakers. Uh, it's the Knights. The, Knights. the LA Knights. Uh, so the team does live in LA, uh, and he he looks at his off season as vacation, uh, and he is not about working out. He's not about anything other than finding the fun. Uh, and these two young men, uh, the trainer and the PR director, have to get him to do Because I remember you acted while playing with the Lakers, I right? Did. I did. And uh, that, was a, you know, that was an opportunity to continue to get my foot in the door and get experience in the offseason so that when I was done playing, I'd actually have uh, you know, some experience and I'd have some understanding of what would be expected of me on set and how I grew I took acting classes and took lessons. Uh, in the off season, but I got I was fortunate. I got to work a lot between seasons. Toughest part about athletics is that mm -hmm. athletes' careers end when most careers begin. Yeah. That when the cheering stops, mm -hmm. you'll never be as famous as you were when you were playing. Does the NBA do enough to help people afterwards? They've gotten better. Uh, I think they do a great job of educating the athlete from day one and providing the programs as they go along in their career to prepare them for life after sports. We have a, we have a retirement uh, association. What I would like to see is more, more, requ more of those programs being required as they're playing. Um, definitely I'm for that. In post-career, uh, uh, I think they, that can step up to, to, no, to another level. I think there definitely needs to be in place, especially within the first two, three years, first two years, if we're going to say, you know, budgetary-wise, the first two years has to, uh, as 
critical time for athletes because all of, like you said, to that point, they're, they're dealing with, in a lot of cases, 93% of them get divorced. Uh, they're dealing with now for the first time scheduling their lives 24-7 where, you know, we're pretty structured as athletes. Day to day, our, our, our game is we're told where to go, where to be for 11 months out of the year. And uh, so having to fit our time with constructive, um, you know, things to do is, is difficult for most athletes. And then being at home, dealing with family 24-7 is a new thing. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then that quiet, sitting in quiet, you know, 20,000 people in arenas and even loud jet engines, <laughs> the, the, the stimulation goes from, you know, high levels to very, very small amounts. And Is it hard to watch after you've played? I didn't, I didn't watch for the first year. Didn't go to a game until the, one of the last games my second year. So I got yeah. away. I really did. It, was, it, was, it ended on a, on, a, on a loss in the NBA Finals, so it was hard to, to, to want to still be around. But physically, you know, getting my body back to a place where I felt healthy. Next, Rick Fox will take your questions and we'll play a game of If You Only Knew. Don't go away. We're back with Rick Fox. Uh, we'll play a game of If You Only Knew in a little while. You're dating a fellow actor. Eliza Dushku. Any plans to marry? Uh, we, we're, well, you know, I've been married she's once. She's in off-season with she, you, right? Yeah, she's in off-season. She's, she's not necessarily high on marriage. Uh, she isn't. No, she's uh, she's not racing. She's not a bridezilla, which is which is fine. You know, which <laughs> How is many fine. children do you have? Uh, I have two. I have a son that's 19, freshman, wow. freshman at LMU, and a uh, daughter that's 14, middle school. Are you close with them? Yeah, yeah. My son actually uh, is is we're really close, too close. Uh, I think he'd like some space from dad. Mm. Uh, but uh, my. Um, my daughter and I actually, at 14, now that she's into boys, I consider it a success that she still talks to me about about them. That's good. Yeah, so I, I, I really, I really stay close to them. So you're, you're a father, father. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Try to be. I, don't, I hope they'd say that. We have some social media questions yeah. for you. Joshua J13 on Twitter. They called you Sweet Feet in the film Holes. Yeah. What did they call you in the Laker locker room? Foxy. But that was that was Chick Hearn. Chick Hearn, call me Foxy, and everyone went with it. At Bobby Blaze 74 via Twitter wants to know, was Odd a tough show to work on, Oz? Uh, it, no, because it was Tom Fontana. It's some of the great actors that you see working today on other TV shows. Uh, I was there in the uh, foundation of the original eight episodes that went off and, you know, was in it for a number of years. It was great. It was great. At Cave K's 928 on Twitter, how did you meet Jake and Amir from College Humor? That was my son. My son was a huge College Humor fan of Jake and Amir, and he said, uh, and you know, and being a dad, I wanted to know what he was into. Uh, I found out who they were, and I went and did some videos with them, and now we're actually hopefully going to get a, a TV series off the ground. Uh, Ed Helms is executive producing, uh -huh. and we'll see if we can get uh, Michael great. over at TBS to make it. Keen Dawson on Facebook. What do you think your best basketball skill was? Uh, selflessness uh, and a willingness to turn myself over to the team concept, but defense. You know, I was I was a defensive, uh, I, you know, basketball IQ guy. So. In the last minute, you wanted to take the best player. Yeah, oh, I wanted him for 48 minutes. I want I I you, you had I had to have the best. It was a badge of honor for me to take on regardless of who that player was. Sometimes Phil, would, you know, I'd, I'd ask for Tim Duncan sometimes, and he was like, no, but then I'd sometimes get a few, few you'd rather stints block of him. A, you'd rather block a shot than score. I'd rather steal the ball. Wasn't a big shot blocker, but I'd rather steal the ball. Now a little game of if you only knew. Okay. Remember the first girl you kissed? Yes, Theus. Thea? Yeah. Theus. Theus. Yeah, no. Where were you, right? Greece? I was, I was in the Bahamas, of all places. Really? How old After were you? After school. I was in the fifth grade, so that would be 11. That's late by today's standards. Yeah, no. You ever know what I happened? I thought you could get a girl pregnant kissing. <laughs> I, grew, I grew up in the church, so they scared me They scared me to death. You ever know what happened to her? I don't. Mm. No. What was your first car? Buick. Skylark. What was your first job? I worked for my dad at the uh, ice factory, his business. Toughest person you ever had to defend? 
Charles Barkley. The muscle man, he was pretty rough. He was wide, but he was also athletic. Was he also, was he a, did he jab you a lot? Was he a, did he taunt? Uh, did he you, talk a lot? He, he talked a lot, but in a jovial way. He had fun. Uh, you never, you never felt threatened by his trash talk. Favorite arena to play in besides Staples? Uh, I got two. Uh, Boston Garden and Great Western Forum. City with the most brutal fans? Uh, Boston, because uh, they're great. Uh, when you're winning, but when you're losing, I got five stitches here in my face, I stitches over here, people threw things at me. Utah's a tough place to play. Utah's it? tough. The uh, fans never stop yelling, right? Right, but that's different than throwing. <laughs> they don't <laughs> throw stuff at you. If not basketball, what sport? Football, tight end. Dream co-star? Oh, wow. Um, someone that's t tall, female, tall. I just saw Ch Charlize Theron, and oh. uh, she's... She's great. She's what, you see in the Western movie? Yeah, I just saw in the Western. Was it funny? Uh, it, it, I, thought the, I thought the strength of it was the relationship between the two of them. I laughed. I had laughed at times. Uh, proudest sports moment? Uh, proudest sports moment? Probably, uh, well, championships are, are an, an easy one uh, for me because it's what I pursued. Probably being drafted. Probably what being college drafted. Did you go to? North Carolina. Actually making it from the Baha little island in the Bahamas all the way to Indiana and then to North Carolina and then to be drafted by Red Arback was pretty. Yeah. What keeps you up at night? My kids. Athlete you most admire outside of basketball? Outside. Wow. Um, I, like, um, I like Federer for a long time. I still do. I, 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 now, though. I know he lost the other day. Most underrated NBA player? Most underrated? I think Charles Barkley for years has been underrated. He still, I mean, he still gets a lot of attention. He's in the Hall of Fame, but he's he, in the Hall. I think he's a, I think he's he's a superstar. I think he's a, what was your pregame ritual? Well, I had to, I always had to have three Advil. <laughs> and I always had to <laughs> really? have, I always had to have three sticks of uh, Bubblicious gum because it kept my mouth from cotton, cottoning up and getting dry. Wow. Uh, those, those, those two things I had to do. Thank you, Rick. Always <laughs> good seeing you, man. <laughs> Big thanks to my guest, Rick Fox. Make sure to catch his newest film, Off Season, The Lex Morrison Story. It's available to rent online at Vimeo.com. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. We'll see you next time.